Pyra is the first blade you will have access to in Xenoblade 2, and fortunately she is one of the best blades in the game thanks to her very special technique. So all you have to do to activate this technique is press up on the D-pad when you are in combat, and she instantly turns into a better blade. Alright, jokes aside, Pyra is a decent blade that is a bit overshadowed by Mithra most of the time, but she has a few tricks of her own that can be pretty useful, and she can be very fun to use in her own right. It makes sense since she's the first blade, they couldn't make her too powerful, but Pyra still manages to scale pretty well into the late stages of the game, and in this video we are going to discuss what Pyra's biggest strengths and weaknesses are, as well as how I like to build and play as her for the most success. If you enjoy this type of guide content, then as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel and look forward to my future content because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So Pyra is, of course, a blade that can only ever be used by Rex, and comes with the standard Aegis Sword weapon, which is the exact same weapon Mithra has, and as such has the exact same stats, assuming they're the same level of trust. One difference you may notice is the critical hit rate. Pyra does not have a critical hit boosting skill on her skill tree, so it's just the standard and average value of 30% with the highest critical hit rate courtship. Not good and not bad, although she could have definitely benefited from it being higher. This weapon has the best topple art in the game, and it has a decent auto attack stat as well, and besides that Pyra basically shares all the other aspects of Mithra like low defenses of 5% physical defense and 10% ether defense, as well as a blade cooldown of 4. Pyra comes with a 10% strength mod which isn't great on its own, but comes with the benefit of the 10% ether mod on Mithra for an effective 20% stat boost. The main things that separate Pyra and Mithra are their elements, Pyra being fire and Mithra being light, and of course, their skill trees. This is the area Mithra has a major advantage, I would say, but Pyra actually still has some pretty good things going for her, so let's discuss that now. Pyra's first skill is Purifying Flames. It has a 5% chance to defeat foes when using a special on a non-boss enemy or with under 20% health, and that chance rises to 15% at level 5. Really terrible skill. One of the worst in the game, and absolutely Pyra's worst. So first of all, almost every non-boss or UM enemies aren't going to really be that tanky. Certainly not tanky enough to where this skill is ever going to be overly useful in any situation. If you have the proper setups, these enemies should go down really fast to make this skill not that important. Especially because the enemy already has to have under 20% health, and what enemy that isn't a unique monster has the tank stats to even tank a good pyre special at that point without it killing them already. Secondly, it requires using a special to begin with, which is an annoying conditional restriction, and thirdly, it only has a 15% chance. This skill might have some small niche uses, maybe on Bringer of Chaos in challenge mode or something, but that 15% chance is killer to make it just never a good skill to rely on, and even if you actually do want to use it, it probably won't activate. It's useless most of the time, and the times it could be useful, you have to pray for a small activation rate. As such, this skill really sucks. But it gets better for Pyra though, because her second skill is Resplendence. It increases blade combo damage by 24% at level 1, rising up to 72% at level 5. Now this is not the damage you deal with any of her specials, but rather the combo damage that comes afterwards. It'll boost all of that damage by 72%. Now it would probably be better to give her an increase to all damage, but having this effect is pretty unique since it can multiply all combo damage separately, and as such makes Pyra have an interesting niche playstyle. Now it isn't too hard to get any blade to get a damage cap blade combo or something, so that really hurts the skill, but where the skill can shine is with damage over time. That counts as blade combo damage, and Pyra has the potential to set up a really powerful damage over time effect with Burnout or Volcano, and will likely be the major focus of the build I want to do and show off in this video. This skill has a good situational use, even if it could be better. Pyra's final skill is Flaming Edge. It increases critical damage by 10% at level 1, rising up to 50% at level 5. Now, critical damage in many situations is very good. Let me quickly explain how it works. So normally, your critical hits will do 25% more damage, or 1.25 times the normal amount of damage. This will additively increase that damage. So at level 5, you will do 75% more damage, or 1.75 times, times the amount of damage. And this will stack with all sources of critical damage increase. A lot of blades would kill to have a skill like this that offers a huge increase to their damage. Pyra is, unfortunately, not one of those characters. Don't get me wrong, it's still a great skill to have and solid on Pyra, but not as useful as you might want it to be because of her average critical hit rate doing her no favors, and just the fact that she has no additive damage on her skill tree to make this effect have a large multiplicative increase on damage. 
Pyra has to get additive damage from other sources like aux cores and accessories because of this. Pyra's critical hit rate with Moon Matter will reach 39% at max affinity, which is okay, but not something that's going to make this skill drastically help her damage capabilities most of the time. You could team her up with Fiora to help her critical hit rate issue, but Fiora doesn't really do much in the way of helping her with combos or anything like that. Makes you wonder how cool it would be if Pyra and Mithra's skills both applied to each other so you could take advantage of high critical rate and critical recharge with this critical damage increase. Regardless, let's talk about her specials now. Now, all of Pyra's specials are ether based and much of her damage is ether, which is weird since she has a strength mod and they try to have you believe Rex focuses more on strength, but yeah, Rex's main blade in all forms focuses much more on ether damage. Pyra's level 1 is Flame Nova. It is single target, a one-hit attack, that's basically the quintessential special. It's fast, but unspectacular besides that. Now, they did give her the same damage ratios as Mithra specials besides her level 4, so this special actually has a pretty good damage ratio. It starts at 300 at level 1, rises to 540 at level 5, and 576 at match affinity, which is the 4th highest in the game. It has no critical hit modifier, and even its effect is unimpressive and not really that useful since it increases damages to beasts, which are not exactly a common enemy. Single hit, of course, isn't great for party meter or chain attacks or overdrive and all that, but it being fast at least lets it be an okay option for setting up fusion combos, but perhaps the main problem is that it really is just outclassed by her level 2 special in pretty much every way. Pyra's level 2 special is Prominence Revolt. It is once again a single hit special with no critical hit modifiers to help her critical damage, which of course kind of sucks, but it's once again a pretty fast special that shares the same damage ratio as Mithra starting at 400 at level 1, rising to 600 at level 5, and 638 at max affinity. The difference between this and her level 1 is Prominence Revolt has an area of effect range of 100 meters, tied for the highest in the game with Photon Edge, which is Mithra's level 2, and three other specials in the game, two of which still technically belong to these two. This makes it a great special in any fight with multiple enemies since it will always hit everything. It's not the huge hit count like Photon Edge, so it isn't great for building party meter or anything like that, but it does manage to be faster, which can make it nice in its own right, especially since its bonus effect is increasing damage to toppled enemies by 150%. Pyra has Anchor Shot, which is a great topple art to use that allows you to use the special afterwards for a lot of burst damage. This can be a nice strategy for doing damage with Pyra, and I absolutely recommend it. Pyra's level 3 special is Blazing End, and this is definitely her best special. It has critical damage as its bonus effect, and it actually has a 25% critical hit modifier to actually make Pyra more likely to get critical hits with it. This can make the special do a huge amount of damage if the cards align right, especially because it once again has one of the highest damage ratios in the game too, starting at 500 at level 1, rising to 780 at level 5, which becomes 850 at max affinity. It is also a 9-hit special, which is very nice, and despite only being single target, it's bound to hurt the target a lot. This special is so good it easily outdamages her level 4 later on in the game, just because of its bonus effect and the bonus to level 1 through 3 specials at max affinity. If you want to set up powerful blade combos and damage over time effects, this is the best special to use to accomplish that goal. Pyra's level 4 special is Burning Sword. It has a damage ratio of 1150 and a 20% critical hit modifier, which is lower than her level 3. Its bonus effect is a nulling guard rate, and neither Pyra's level 3 or level 4 pierce defense, which makes the level 3 a better option most of the time. That said, the level 4 is a better option early on in the game since it will always have a higher damage ratio, and it still offers invincibility and ability to freeze driver combos or fusions, which can of course be helpful. All in all though, this level 4 is pretty unimpressive and not worth using over a level 3 or even level 2 special in most situations, and I'd probably only recommend it for very specific fusion combo situations. The bonus effect can be useful against a few higher block rate enemies, but for the most part just stick to critical damage level 3 since this special doesn't offer much. Not even a high critical hit rate modifier sadly for Pyre's critical damage skill. That about covers Pyra's skills and specials, and this is kind of why she gets easily outclassed by Mithra, who has great team-wide support options and just does a lot of DPS thanks to Lightspeed Flurry and Lightning Buster, which is a great special that does pierce defense. Pyra's critical damage bonus can't help out that much when her crit rate is unspectacular, and her specials don't even get large modifiers at all. Of course, this does not mean Pyra is bad, and I think she has some cool uses if you set her upright. Of course, you should always go with Moon Matter as the core chip since you want as much critical rate as possible, obviously. And for Aux Cores, I'd say Affinity Max Attack is a must since she has no additive damage on her skill tree. 
The other aux core I'm using is fusion combo up to help boost the blade combo effects even further for this specific setup, but you could always go with another damage booster like outdoor attack up, which can still help her out quite a bit. For accessories, I would recommend running at least a loincloth to give her a nice boost to damage. A bisque mask is another option that gives even a larger increase to damage, but you need a team setup that can prevent you from taking damage, and Crimson Headband can be nice to make your critical damage reach crazy levels if you actually manage to get critical hits. It will have some diminishing returns just because her crit rate isn't that high, of course, and she already has critical damage, so it isn't as much of an effective increase, but it is still a nice option to consider and can still help out quite a bit. If you want to go all in on fusion combos and support, then something like Rainbow Belt to increase topple duration could be a good option, and Avant Guard Metal is always a nice option to keep yourself healthy every time you do get a critical hit. Burst Symbols are good options if you are going to chain attack, as you might expect, but since I'm focusing more on damage over time, I'm going to skip that. Basically the typical offensive blade stuff that all of them like. For pouch setup, since the Aegis Sword has really low cooldown arts already, I'm going to go with Astrology Made Simple in the second pouch for a special damage boost since Pyra likes the books, and boosting special damage is really nice. I'm going to put a 0.4 art recharge item in the first pouch, Narsapair Jelly in this case, and that will get boosted by the book to give us some decent art recharge when we need it. Now let's take a look at how to practically use Pyra for the most success. So as stated, I think Pyra's most unique aspect and one of her biggest strengths is setting up powerful damage over time effects with her powerful specials like her level 3. And in order to do that, we want to have really good fusion combo support. So we definitely want to have Tora or at least someone really good at breaking in the party. I'm choosing Tora because he can set up the volcano effect nicely by having Earth Cutie Pie. And ideally what we're going to want to do is have the stone go off before we use our level 3 if we can. And we can get a lot of burst damage on the topple there, as you just saw, and then the fusion combo is going to come back again, because Tora broke again. And we get this damage over time effect, the orange number, as you can see, of 434,000. Now, this is on normal mode against Tyranna Titan. And as you can see, he's basically already almost dead, just because of the strength of that special and that fusion combo. And this is very repeatable, as you might imagine. We can basically just do the same thing again. I'm just going to show it off one more time how it's not all that hard to do at all. And even if you don't get the fusion with Tora using his combo on the same combo or something like that, that's not a big deal. Because you can still just use Volcano on a launch or something and just get a lot of damage that way. Volcano is the most powerful damage over time effect, so that is why we're going to focus on it a lot. You can see the difference between crits and non-crits, too. Pyra's critical damage is so much higher than her non-crits, it's ridiculous. You'll probably get, like, three times the amount of damage from critical hits. Which is why it's very, very useful if you can consistently get those, even with her lower critical hit rate. Damage over time effect is 415,000 this time. And that's going to be plenty to kill him. But what about really taking advantage of this against higher health enemies? Let's try showing off this method against Cloud Sea King Ken in challenge mode. He has 50 million HP, a lot more powerful than any other enemy we have fought so far. For this specific situation, I'm going to be running Morag with a ultimate combo Lance who can smash, and with Shulk who can topple. The reason for this is that we want to use smash to increase our damage over time effect. Every time an enemy is smashed, it will increase the damage over time effect by the fusion combo bonus of the character that smashed it. So as you can see, we have an orange number of 511,000 with this Volcano. And with Tora and Morag doing our driver combo for us, this just increases by about 200,000 every time we get a smash. And all the while, we can just continue pumping out damage with Pyra using our level 3 more, even if we're not contributing and naming combo damage. One cool thing you can do is if you want to get to your level 3 faster with Pyra, you can swap to Myth or get that critical recharge stacking, and then swap right back to Pyra and then use your level 3 again. So, something really cool about this strategy is that you can take down these enemies really fast, even without chain attacks. Like, I think this fight lasted less than two minutes without me even having to do much of anything. Like, at this point, I don't have spike defense, and I don't have any way to heal except for potions, so I'm just not even attacking him much at this point. And his health is still going down extremely fast, because we have a damage cap damage over time effect all the way maxed out at 999,000. And this is all thanks to the power of Pyra's level 3. Potentially, with that critical damage buff on Pyra's skill tree, she can actually reach some insane damage higher than most characters in the game. 
Her raw damage potential is very high. Her DPS might not be as great as someone like Mithra, but she has very, very good raw damage if you can get everything going right. Her level 3 is particularly powerful at something like that, but that doesn't mean it's the only way. Her level 2 is also another good option for this, and maybe you want to just set up something really quickly with the Prominence Revolt on a topple, and we're going to show off how well that functions now in this next challenge here. So this is Dino Drama, you got this big Soros enemy, and we're going to get Tor to set up his stone, and then we're going to set up our Volcano after that. Shouldn't be too hard to do since Tor is amazing at breaking. So let's set up our Volcano now. And we'll see what kind of damage we can get that way. Obviously it's not going to be as much, but it is something quick that you can do. And I'm going to use Volcano here. The damage goes off on the topple there, and we get a decent effect here. You're going to see that we're going to get a pretty good damage over time effect on the Soros. I actually can't see it right now. Looks like it's at 192,000 right now, and we can just use our area of effect with Prominence Revolt level 2 to hit all the other enemies on the field, which is a very good strategy when you're up against multiple enemies. And our allies all the while can focus on the Goliath Soros. Now, if you want to unlock Shulk or something, I guess you can employ the same strategy if you don't have him in the overworld yet, since you have to beat this challenge first. And we'll just use Pyre to take out the remaining enemies with her area of effect with her level 2 special, because that is a good option you can use here. It's going to hit basically everything on the field, no matter what, like I already said. We can set up another decent damage over time effect on that first Mammoth, target the second Mammoth, and focus on him, and then the first one will end up dying while we're targeting him. So this is what I think Pyra's biggest strength is. Because of her blade combo damage boost, because you can put fusion combo up and stack it with all your other damage increases, you can set up these really powerful damage over time effects much easier than a lot of other characters. The only other characters that can really come close to this easily is probably Corvin and Cutie Pie. Pyra has a very nice benefit here with this ability. And it's probably one of her biggest and strongest niches. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have practical use on any, like, super optimal challenges over someone like Corvin or Cutie Pie, but it is still a very strong use, and I think if those blades didn't exist, she would be a really good third option for something like that. So Pyre absolutely still offers some useful utility in combat because of this, and honestly, I think damage over time is really fun. It's, it's honestly more fun than chain attack setups to me, because you're always constantly doing something instead of just waiting for the next round of a chain attack and just watching the big numbers. So in that sense, Pyre is actually pretty fun to play, and it gets even more fun when you combine Pyre and Mithra and use their strengths together with each other. Like, for example, using Mithra to critical recharge so you get to Volcano faster, then setting up a powerful damage over time effect with Pyre, and then swapping back to Mithra to just output the insane DPS lightning busters while the Volcano damage over time is ticking. There's a lot of good things you can do, and that's one of the Aegis, why the Aegis is one of the most powerful blades in the game. Pyra has another form we could talk about here, but I already talked about it in the Mithra video, so check out that one if you want to learn more about that. I think that's going to cover it for Pyra specifically. Damage over time is fun if you hate chain attacks, and Pyra does that very well. She's also a lot of people's favorites, so I'm glad she's still viable in her own way. I hope you all learned something useful from this guide, and if you enjoyed watching, make sure to like, comment, buy the cool Xeno-themed merchandise, and subscribe, and look forward to my future Blade Guides. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.